I've invented this new word, go with, G-O-W-I-T-H, or goes with. It is to replace the idea of causality. Certain things go with each other. And sighing wind goes with a same world in which there are human hearts and human emotions. And if there were not a world with human hearts and emotions, there would be no wind. And if there were no wind, air, there would be no human hearts and emotions. It's a transaction. It's a recipe. Every event, then, in the external world is as dependent on the observer for its happening as, for example, is a rainbow. The sun is shining and there's moisture in the atmosphere. And the sun being at the right angle to the moisture makes a rainbow. And if somebody is there, they see the rainbow. That is a mythology, a way of putting things that is acceptable to us in the current climate of philosophical and scientific fashion. But I want to put it in another way. The sun is shining and there is a person standing. If there were moisture in the atmosphere, there would be a rainbow, but there isn't. So there is no rainbow. If you want to be fair, there is no rainbow if nobody is watching it, you see. And what applies to the tenuous, filmy, luminescent rainbow applies equally well to the hardest rocks, the solidest mountains, and the hottest fires. Because all existence is a relationship. It's like the skin of the drum. If it's not there, it will no, no amount of hitting a non-existent skin will produce any noise. So you see, energy is, uh, we can see this, energy is relationship. We can see the falling fist to the skin of the drum, boing, like that. And if there isn't both the falling fist and the skin, no noise, no existence. But existence is not only the impact of rocks upon each other. Existence requires, always as its third, you can get the rocks knocking, the sun and the moisture, the tree crashing to the ground, uh, the sun pouring out electrical energy. But none of these things constitute existence until related with the neurological complex. But then you have to look backwards and say at the same time, the neurological complex belongs to the same world as the sun. It's a physical pattern, physical behavior, physical energy. But it, it, it takes this complexity of pattern to evoke the world. You see, this idea is unfamiliar. And that's the difficulty of understanding it, that's all. It's a very simple idea, but it's an unfamiliar one, and it's an unfashionable one. Although, as I say, this sort of thinking is coming back to us at this time. One gets the perfectly uncanny feeling, the world and oneself, as simply two phases of a single process. Well, as the rainbow metaphor, we arbitrarily favor an explanation of the triangle, the impact of energies in the external world, and an observer of this impact, which, um, as it were, energizes or realizes them, makes them real. The difficulty that we have in our prejudice, that it's the two forces out there that are real, and the observer is irrelevant to the reality of the situation. That's what we're really saying. It goes back to the whole notion that man himself is irrelevant. Man is conceived as something, therefore, that is irrelevant in various ways. Uh, he could be said to be irrelevant because he is a spiritual visitor from another world altogether. He could be said to be irrelevant because he's unimportant. He makes very little difference to the total universe. He's very small. But when you get this kind of thinking, you want to go back and ask, why do people want to believe that man is irrelevant? When you, when you hear today people's comments on that old myth of man as the head of nature, they come back in a very funny way. They say, oh, that's the most conceited point of view. Man is part of nature. Yes, but why is it? that the naturalists who think that man is part of nature are always fighting nature because they don't understand what it means to be the head of nature. Every creature is the head of nature in its turn and we all take turns because it's taking turns that makes the world go round. Every creature in its turn is the head of nature because each creature creates the world in its own image. And uh, so each creature as a creator of the world is man. Man simply means the middle position. This is the whole idea of man, the middle, the middle way, the mean. And so wherever is the central point, that is the point called man, just as you are the center of your universe. And uh, as the astrologers ex explained, that uh, when you wanted to draw the map of the soul, you took the center point occupied by the individual organism. In other words, a date and a time that gave you a latitude and a longitude. So in relation to that date and time, 
how was the universe arranged shows the map of the individual soul.